Hey guys, what's up? So I got a great question here from Prop Poopul. Interesting name. He says, hey Chris, love your videos, man. I've been learning by reading books as well as watching YouTube videos. Sometimes I feel like it is almost inevitable to not copy and paste the code from the book you are reading or the YouTube video you're watching. And also because most of the time the tutorials teach you the best practice and also the books. Um, my question is when do you draw the line? How do you actually learn when you are a beginner? Did you copy the tutorials and then try to build something modeled after the tutorial that you learned from? Is it okay to copy and paste boilerplate? Thanks. So here's, here's the truth. Most people copy and paste code. Most programmers actually copy and paste code. That, that's, what, that's what we've done forever. Before we had internet and Stack Overflow, programmers would actually copy actual text files or um, you know whatever sort of text editor file, if it's a Python file or something, they would have all that shit saved in a folder of how they iterate files or US, you know, use the OS walk. Um, there was all these different things that they ran into time and time again where instead of having to, to research because it was much harder, you know, back in the day before Stack Overflow made it very easy to, to find the answer to the question that you're asking. Um, and really that's the combination of both Stack Overflow and, uh, um, I'm sorry, Google because in most ca cases people actually you know, they're searching and Google, and Google's smart enough to find the right Stack Overflow. Whereas if you were searching in Stack Overflow, you probably wouldn't have as good of results. At least that's the way I do it. So, you know, most of these people, they, they saved them to directories and things like that. And they weren't, they weren't great programmers. Like, they knew that, you know, if they didn't do something multiple times, that they were going to forget. And most of the time in programming, you're kind of doing things you're not doing the same repetitive stuff over and over again. That's not why you get paid 100000 or $120,000 a year to do the same thing over and over again. It's because you're moving into this technology, you're moving into this framework, you're moving into this language. It doesn't matter what, you know, you're, you're constantly moving around. So it's how quickly can you adapt? How quickly can you learn? How quickly can you just hit the ground running? Because a lot of that comes from, from copying and pasting. Now, where you, you truly become a senior is where you're like, you know what? I do obviously know how to do a for loop in JavaScript or in Python or something like that. You don't have to look up those examples every single time. Now, if you're trying to do like an OS walk through all the directories in Python because you're mostly coding in JavaScript or in C Sharp, then that's perfectly fine to be able to do that. If you don't remember how to use the HTTP web client that's built into C Sharp, that's perfectly fine to look up how to do that. If you don't know about like uh, authentication and authorization, depending on what sort of framework, a lot of that stuff is going to be copy and pasted. And and just to be honest with you, what separates the seniors from the beginners or the ignorant, or really not ignorant, but maybe lazy, is that the seniors at least understand why they're copying and pasting. And they understand the, the benefits that, that they have gained from copying somebody else's code without having to reinvent the wheel. You hear that a lot in programming. And then they also understand how to tweak it to their needs. But because we all need a, a, a shared state system and a React code base, does it all mean, it doesn't mean that we're, you know, if we're a supposed senior that we're going to go out and we're going to build Redux because we want to uh, build a, a purely functional state management system for multiple components. I mean, we're not going to do that. And it's, it's not expected that we do that. And it wouldn't be cost effective for the companies that actually hire us to write code to do that. So to answer your question, in this day and age, most of the job is surrounding copying and pasting code. Because if you're literally writing everything from scratch, you're, you're wasting a lot of company time and money. And you're having to, you're probably not doing it good. It, it's, it's, it's why physics, you know, and, and physics, uh, you know, people like, you know, let's look at it, like even Einstein, I probably shouldn't get into something like that. I truly don't know a whole lot about but you know, Einstein's not going to go back from square one, he's going to learn based off of what you know, Newton's um, laws of motion had, had taught him and things like that. So he's, you know, you stand on the shoulder of giants that came before you when it comes to programming, just as as it comes to math and physics and things like that, you can't possibly understand all of it. And for that reason, yes, we're going to be copying and pasting and we should be copying and pasting from good sources. A good senior programmer knows when he's copying and pasting some shit because we sometimes copy and paste some shit out of haste or a lack of time. But as you become a, a better developer, you start to realize, man, you know, why is it doing that? Do I really need to, to do all that? Oh, I can tweak this and I can tweak that. And that's that's a lot of what you do. 
Now that doesn't mean, and I don't want to discourage anybody from like starting their own framework or something like that. But one of the reasons why I even created my own framework um, for it was a, a, a Git frame, well not Git, but um, it's on GitHub. And let me pull it up here. The reason why I created it though is because I wanted to learn. So what I'm saying is that if you truly want to learn and you want to master something, then you know build your own project. But here's Bayside JS. It's named after my dog named Bayside, which is named after the Bayside band, the rock band. Um, so it's kind of a, a lineage there that goes down the, the line. So I'm not directly impeding upon the band's name, but yeah, the, the band name truly influenced this framework. So with this, so I didn't have to do this, right? I could have easily used Express or I could have used a million other Node.js frameworks that are out there, but I said, you know what? I want to learn the process of a raw Node application that does templating uh, and data binding and things like that. So did I go out and have to do all of it from scratch? No, I didn't actually. I ended up using some dependencies out there that made my life easier. So if I look at the package.js, um, you can see that, well, in the dev dependencies, I'm using Chai, so I'm not creating my own assertion library or my own test runner, which is Mocha. I'm not building uh, my own HTTP request library. I'm using requests um, to do that. Uh, also, here's a big thing, Nunjux. That's a template engine. So there's a, there was a lot of code behind the, the template engine. Now, my experience of saying, hey, do I want to use Nunjux or do I want to use something else? Do I want to use Pug? Uh, or mustache or any, anything like that. But I chose Nunjux based off of, you know, what I felt like was experience. And really I wanted to model something uh, close to the Django environment that I was used to. And that was really my my reasonings for, for using Nunjux. And some people had asked me why I did that. And, and that's, that's the answer to, to why I did that. So, so that's really it, guys. I mean, it, 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 you're, you're, you're never going to write stuff from scratch. When you're first learning, you're going to be reading out of a book. You're going to be looking at Stack Overflow. The best way to learn is to build something. If you're going to be using a web technology, spin up a web application, whether it's Express.js um, or any other framework out there, spin up the application and get your templates and your static folder, all that in working order so that you can include React files or Knockout.js files or whatever it is that you're working on. And just build stuff because that, that's really going to be the way that you learn and and really building stuff is going to be copying and pasting and using libraries and things like that but it's going to be a a definite learning process like you're never going to be uh, i would say even for this framework which is very very minimalistic i would have a hard time believing that somebody that literally is just getting started coding is just going to be able to jump in and build their own command line tool and things like that uh, or to understand even what a command line tool is used for. Those things just come with time and you really just have to respect the process of, of just giving it the, your, your, as much time and attention as you can like comfortably do and, and you know, health, uh, you know, health wise be able to contribute. And eventually you'll notice that you are making strides. But once again, last, last thing I'll say, and don't worry about copying and pasting code, the best of us do it. All right. Thanks guys. What, uh, Make sure you subscribe. Take care. Bye. Hey guys. So a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12 week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12 week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.